we are in a quote unquote new topic. It's new because we weren't doing fractions last lesson, but it's not new because of course you are familiar with fractions. We've met these before. So what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly remember some old, cover some old ground that we do know, and then we're going to get straight into it. Can anyone tell me the word fraction, it starts off with um, this kind of sort of sub word, if you like, um, that we use in another word. Like if you break your arm, we would say you've got a fracture. a fracture. Very good. And that idea there that you've got something which has been broken into pieces. That's all we mean by a fraction. Instead of whole things, it's like, no, we're just talking about the parts of it. Bravi, do you mind getting that for us? Thank you. Okay. so. I just want to remind you of the fact that we, generally speaking, have three different forms of fractions and we also want to be able to convert between them and that's what we're just going to review for today. So for starters, can someone just give me an example of a fraction, any fraction that you like? Say it again. Three by five. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. Now I think what you mean is three over five, right? Now I will say, often you will hear that said, thank you Mary. Often you will hear it said exactly the way Jessica did. Some people say three by five, right? But of course, a little bit like this, like if you saw this, you know how there's an operation that's hiding in there that we don't say? What's the missing operation? Times. It's times, right? Now we kind of agree, yeah, there's a times in there. But when you hear the words three by five, there's a word also hiding, just like there's an operation hiding. What's the word that Jessica's hiding in here? Three by five. Divides, Divides very good. 3 divided by 5. But I'm just going to put a caution on this because I used to say this, but then I noticed some other people when they said the same phrase, 3 by 5, they were hiding a different word. They weren't hiding divide. They were actually hiding this word. Yeah, 3 times or 3 multiplied by 5. So I'm going to, as much as I can, catch me if I mistakenly do it. I'm not going to call this 3 by 5 because it's a bit ambiguous. If I write it down, you know what it is. But because we've got a numerator here, that is smaller than the denominator. What would we call this? What kind of fraction would you call that? Proper. Just a, yeah, a proper fraction is the word we would, the name we would usually give to this. It's a proper fraction. Now, if you've got a proper fraction, what's the opposite of a proper fraction? Louise? Improper. improper. Very good. Can someone give me an example of an improper fraction? Anush? Nine over one. Nine over one. Sure, why not? Okay. So this is improper because rather than the numerator being smaller than the denominator, it's the other way around, isn't it? So we'll call this guy an improper fraction. And then <clears throat> lastly, there's one other form that's kind of like the improper fraction but different. Yeah, which one? Mixed. mixed. So I've got mixed and then I add another word onto it. A mixed, we tend to call them mixed numerals, that, I mean, it's all the same idea. The idea that it's mixed, a mixed numeral between, it's like a fraction bit, and there's also a, number. yeah there's a whole number part isn't there? Can someone give me an example of a mixed numeral? Vishaka. 3, 5 over 7. Okay, 3 and 5 sevenths, right? So it's a bit weird because, you know, again, there's an operation hiding it here that we don't say, but we kind of assume that you know what it is. It's not times, like here, what's the hiding operation? It's just plus, which is, it's a bit funny, isn't it? It's a bit like, wait, can you make up your mind? What's the thing that you're hiding? The context kind of tells you what is missing. There's a plus hiding in there. In fact, I might even uh, encourage all of you to write down next to that. And that's three plus five over seven. That's what it's really abbreviating, okay? So, real quick, there are two kinds of conversions that we're going to be interested in recovering. Do you want to suggest one, Merrick? Are you putting like the mixed numeral to the improper fraction? Okay, so that's one of them. So you could turn one of these into the other, right? Both of these are bigger than one. So you could convert this, for example, this mixed numeral, we could turn it into an improper fraction. So let's think about this, right? Mixed numeral. Now, You've seen before, Merrick. We know you can get the answer, but that's not the part that's most interesting to us. So let's, let's think about it. To go from a mixed numeral, hold up, hold your thought. I know you've got it. I know you've got it. I want us all to have it, right? To go from a mixed numeral to an improper fraction. Let's actually do this, and Merrick's got the right answer, but I want to unpack why he does. He did seven times three. Why did he do seven times three? Hmm. Because I know that you can do it, but I want to know why you're doing it. Leah, what are you thinking? Um, because three is three holes, it would be like having seven over seven three times. 
Ah, very good. That's so good. I want to repeat that word for word because this is three holes, right? Three holes there. It's like having seven over seven three times. So I'd love us to write that down actually. That's seven over seven three times. And that's why Merrick did the multiplication, right? So that there is the three out the front. And then of course we agreed that the thing that's missing, the operation that's missing in there is plus. Five over seven. And now at this point you can tell me, what is seven times three? It's 21. Very good. That's how many sevenths we have over here. And then we've got five more of them over here. Like so. And that's why we can say in total, how many sevenths are there in this mixed numeral? Yeah. 26. Very good. 26 over 7. So that's how we would go from a mixed numeral to an improper fraction. We would reverse that if we wanted to go the other way around. There's one other thing that I just want to remind you is the case, which is about these guys. Do you remember what these are? Equivalent fractions. What does it mean when two fractions are equivalent? Yeah. Okay, very good. Two over four and four over eight. Why don't we write that as an example? Two over four is equal to. They're the same size, even though I'm writing them differently. Merrick. 0.5. Okay, 0.5 would be the same again, though I do notice that 0.5 is a, is a different way of writing it. It's not a fraction, actually. It's a decimal, yeah? Even though the size is the same. Did, uh, did you have a question or a thought? You're just stretching. Yeah, okay, Merrick. So you basically just times both by two? Ah, yeah, you've taken the numerator and multiplied by two, and then you took the denominator and you also multiplied that by two. Could someone give me maybe one more equivalent fraction to both of these? Jessica? 8 over 16. 8 over 16. And we've doubled again, or you could have gone straight over by multiplying by four. Top and bottom is really important. Okay, Mary? I'm trying to do like the smaller, so it would be half. Okay, so all of these fractions are equivalent, but none of them is the simplest, is it? Yeah. So one over two would be the simplest way to write any of these. But sometimes, why might we sometimes want to write a fraction even though it's not in its simplest form? Krishan? So match the denominator with another fraction. Very good. If you've got two fractions together and you're adding them and they're not the same denominator, we might make it not the simplest form so that the two can talk to each other. One last question, Merrick? Oh, no, that's all right. You sure? That's okay. That's right. Now, this is what we're just going to review today. You, you know how to do this stuff, okay? Now, there is an exercise in the textbook, but frankly, it's a little bit boring, so I don't want to give it to you. So instead, actually, I should ask, would anyone like to just do the textbook exercise? Because you can if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Such a merry way to answer. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Being that I got this resounding no, um, I'm going to give you... Um, two challenges, and you've seen me give you these before. Um, Mrs. Lee, could you pass me my iPad in my bag, please? So these are not going to be quick questions. Could you make a little subheading, which is, thank you, Mrs. Lee's, um, two open problems. Two open problems. Okay. Now, um, you may, as soon as you see this, you might recognize it. Yes, for Shaka? Oh, very good. E Q U I V, that's a bad A, <laughs> L E N T. Is that okay? I did spell it right, it was just messy. Just like that's right. It's not a work. Okay, so here are my two open problems. Um, in each case, you can use the digits 0 to 9 at most once. You don't have to use all of them as you'll see in a second, um, but you, can, you can't like use three more than once, or you can't use five more than once or something like that. Okay? So here are the two challenges. I'd like you to use these digits to fill in this statement here. So I've got a fraction over here, which is two digits on the top and two digits on the bottom, and I want an equivalent fraction that is just one digit on the top and one digit on the bottom. So that's my first open problem. It's open because there are many solutions to this. I have a handful here, but I'm keen to, I'm not gonna tell you how many, because last time I told you how many, you guys completely destroyed me. So that's the first one. And then the second one starts off the same way. So you got another two digit on two digit fraction, but what I'd like it to be equal to is a mixed numeral, like so. Okay, yes? Between the two, 
spaces, can we just make up if it's minus or divided? Ah, so, so this is a two-digit number, so it's not operations. So for example, you could put 1 and 2 here and make 12. Does that make sense? Yeah? OK. So here are the two open problems. I'm going to let you, you can choose which one you want to start with, though I did put this one first on purpose. See how many solutions you can come up with. Um, no calculators for this one. I really want you to think and use your brain um, because it just becomes boring if you've got a calculator there. Okay. So good luck. If you have some solutions, let us know. Um, and we'll see if you can beat the number of solutions that I came up with. So good luck.